In order to take good pictures of space objects, you need to accurately polar align your telescope. I wanted to show you how to use the SharpCap software for an accurate polar alignment for astrophotography. But before I do that, let me give you some brief introduction about polar alignment. So what is polar alignment? Polar alignment is aligning your telescope's equatorial mount with a celestial pole, whether it is a north celestial pole or a south celestial pole. You might wonder what is this north and south celestial pole, right? So think of there is an imaginary sphere around the earth and it has a north and south pole, right? that is actually a north celestial pole and a south celestial pole. You might wonder, how do I point my telescope to these north or south celestial poles? There are two pole stars available, depends on which hemisphere that you are referring to. On the north side, there is a Polaris, very close to the north celestial pole. It's almost like three quarters of a degree close by. Whereas on the south side, there is a star, pole star called Arctantis. This is also called as a south star. And it's very difficult to actually see the star. The magnitude of this star is like 5.6. So, but if you use a small pol polar scope, you should be able to locate this easily. This star is also called Sigma Arctantis or Polaris Astralis. So pointing your mount and the telescope to either of these pole stars is called rough alignment method. All you are doing is trying to see whether you can see the, the pole star through your eyepiece pretty much gives you an idea that your mount and the telescope are polar aligned. This method is called rough alignment method. This method is very good if you are doing uh, visual with your telescope, meaning you are only just looking at it. And also this is a very good method when you are starting your quote unquote amateur astronomy. But this method won't get us anywhere if you wanted to take pictures, what we call astrophotography. There are various tools available in the market. For visual use, you can use like crosshair eyepieces. These are very good if you are trying to do star alignment of your mounts. It can be a good tool for two star and four star alignment. There are also other tools like polar scopes available. These are mainly to polar align your mount. So you actually take this polar scope, mount it on your uh, mount, and then uh, inside the polar scope, you will see like this etched pattern, like, you know, the Cassiopeias, the Polaris and all. And based on the day and the time, you will make sure you rotate them. Before SharpCap software came into existence, people widely used the drift alignment method or polar drift alignment method. Polar drift alignment method is very popular even today. It gives you a very accurate polar alignment. What it is, is once you complete your polar alignment, you further make adjustments to make sure that you reduce the drifting of the star until you satisfy that your alignment is accurate. There is another tool that came into existence in the recent past. It is called QHY CCD Pole Master. 
It is widely popular, widely used today. And Dr. Q, uh, who is the inventor of this uh, pole master, uh, it became extremely popular by combining the hardware and software and providing an accurate polar alignment for astrophotography. Dr. Q combined the hardware to the software by connecting the software to the pole master camera and created a virtual software polar scope. So his company and him wrote the algorithm to see the star pattern around Polaris and suggest the corrections that you need to make to the mount. If you are interested in QHY CCD Pole Master Camera, slow down this video and I have step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this one. QHY CCD Pole Master is widely used today for polar alignment. Some people do drift alignment or polar drift alignment after the QHY CCD Pole Master activity is complete to make it more precise and accurate. Robin Glover on the left started SharpCap and he is the author of SharpCap Pro as well. Recently, in one of the Amateur Astronomy Clubs in New York. This is from their website. If you are interested, you can go into more details about the SharpCap author. SharpCap you can download from this website. I think the basic version is free. The pro version is like $10 a year. They started testing with every camera that's out there that is ASCOM compliant and then started uh, supporting the cameras. In sharp cap, you have to go to this thing called Polar Align. That's one of the choices in the sharp cap software. So when you press next, there are a couple of options there like noise reduction, minimum star width, maximum star width and all. You may need to play around with these settings or you can just copy my settings from here and then make changes. A couple of things that I wanted to highlight here would be if you are not seeing the most recent frame solved, that means your mount is not properly sitting on the due north or due south. I'm in Texas, so I'm on the north side or the northern hemisphere. So I can see Polaris from where my mount is. So I usually make sure my mount is placed on the north side looking at the Polaris. That would be my starting point. If I move my tripod maybe to the left or to the right of the Polaris, a little bit more than normal, I won't have this most recent frame solved. It just says unsolved. So keep that in mind. Now when you press next from that frame, it will ask you to rotate the RA axis. So you go back to the mount, release the RA axis, the clutch, and then turn the mount about 45 to 90 degrees or so and then lock the RA axis clutch. Come back to the software and press next. The sharp cap software understands that you did rotate your mount. The stars that you are looking at are going to move. The moment it sees the movement enough, it will highlight the button next and you press next. You will start seeing the polar alignment error on the screen, but this is not the screen. You need to press next to make the corrections to your polar alignment error on the mount. So once you press next, this is where you would see the left and right adjustments and up and down adjustments. So on any mount, you would see two kinds of knobs or clutches. One is altitude adjustment knob. Usually it will be only one. The other one is the azimuth adjustments knob. Usually there will be two, one on the left, one on the right of your mount. 
the left and right azimuth adjustments will move it to the left or will move it to the right and the altitude actually is the correction that you have to make for your altitude uh, and your location so now you will see the error that you need to make corrections to your mount either left or right or up or down keep in mind those degrees hours and minutes that you see up there so you need to make that 0 1 degree from 1 degree to 0 degrees from 14 hours or 12 hours or whatever right now to 0 hours and minutes maybe like in the 10 20 30 range it cannot be higher than that ideally a good drift alignment the polar drift alignment recommends that you are below 10 arc minute error the lower that you get the better it is when you make the corrections to your mount on the degrees and the hours the course adjustments on your knobs would be easier the trouble comes in when you are trying to make those very fine arc minute adjustments where you have to have patience to move very very slow by looking at your computer screen that's the key to make sure that it works properly once the polar align error is complete your mount is ready to take awesome pictures in the sky in the next video i will cover the all star polar alignment in case if you have no access to neither of the pole stars either south or north thanks for watching clear skies and happy holidays